Welcome to another artist chat with Music for Your Inbox. I'm Jennifer Biorsi, one of the co-directors of Music for Your Inbox. And today we're going to talk about this month's sound film with the artists who created it, uh, created it Naila Hunter and Jin Guangxi. So I'm going to get them invited and then we can have a conversation about how the film was made, how the music was made, and um, the cool work that we have out this month. Hi, welcome. Hi. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> I'm so mm. glad to talk to you two about this month's film. Um, by way kind of inter introduction, um, we connected, Music for Your Inbox connected Naila and Xinguang to make this film. Naila wrote the music called Forest Dwelling and uh, then Xinguang took, oh, took the music and responded to it with a really beautiful film work. And it's out now. If you've seen it, drop your questions along the way. If you haven't seen it, get inspired and grab a ticket. Um, and I see, like, I, I've loved experiencing this film, and it feels to me very much like um, a kind of, like, reverie on the idea of home. And there's this sense of, like, like yearning and uh, that you both kind of are dealing with and these kind of paradoxes that you face when you kind of grapple grapple with the idea of home, like paradoxes of, like, nature versus the city, um, of, like, temporariness versus permanence and, like, community versus solitude. So um, I thought it might be nice to kind of start the conversation um, with – Naila, I was wondering if you could talk some nature uh, features really prominently in like a lot of your work um, in really thoughtful ways. And I was wondering if you could talk kind of about your relationship to nature and how you see it interacting with your music. Yeah, I really, I really like the word yearning here because mm -hmm. I actually feel like when, when I'm out in nature, it's a, a combination of meeting that yearning head on and then also like quenching that yearning feeling if you will um but but yeah i i think incorporating you know field recordings of natural settings that i've been in, <laughs> natural settings that i've been in like um you know up north wherever just whatever i come across even in my own yard um and just kind of injecting a, a dose of sunshine into everything when you have those sounds around you um and yeah i think, I think you know most recently i put out a record that was focused on nature in a different way more about like the way that nature kind of perseveres um despite you know human failings and our obsession with destruction and so yeah i think at this current moment i'm looking at nature through the lens of um of judgment if you will mm. um but in a good way and so so when we loop it back into uh the beautiful film that you made which by the way i'm just so honored that you chose uh the music <laughs> that you did um i i think right like thinking about home and the way that we can incorporate um nature's resilience into our own everyday lives um that really came across in the visuals so yeah yeah i think that's really yeah yearning is such a uh it's, it's yearning is such a kind of um gentle and tender feeling and i love how it kind of evokes action but is not manic necessarily which is a really interesting kind of in-between place to be i was wondering um if you could also talk about i got to first hear your music at the getty uh dissonant days and i just love the way that forest dwelling really fully transports the listener um, like when I'm listening to it, I can't even tell if the birds outside are like, if it's the music, if it's me, like, and I feel really kind of settled into this, this really state of, you use this term, right, nature worship, which I really love. And I feel like I'm transported there even kind of no matter where I am. Um, and I would love to hear about how that piece in particular was made. Um, you recorded it after a weekend in Yosemite, I, I read, and yeah. kind of how you made it and the story of, of, you know, how it came to be. Yeah, 
Uh, so we, my partner and I, um, had been visiting the family up in Yosemite. Um, and every time we go there, it's just, you know, we come across a new waterfall or just something that we happen upon. And I think we were in a meadow near, near a waterfall and it just felt like we needed to capture, capture that sound. And then, you know, every time we go up there, it just is kind of a reminder of everything we're missing from the city. And uh, I think that was a, a turning point for us was that maybe it was 2022, I think so, um, where we just realized, oh, we're not city people maybe anymore, or like don't don't want to be city people anymore. What would it be like to actually just live in the woods? And you know, I think people can be kind of dramatic about, well, I'll just I'll just go be a hermit in the woods, right? But actually feeling the conviction and knowing like oh no but that is the life for me that i, that, I feel like the, this piece kind of represents that switch mm -hmm. and it's it's long form it's a it's a long story you have to really pour into that um to make it happen but it's worth it because i want whatever is on the other side of that long form journey you know yeah <laughs> absolutely and i and i think it's great that you brought up the long form too because i think that's something that's really um kind of quietly brave about both of your practices is your like willingness to sit with ideas and let them take their time to unfold um so the film um that xin Kong created is about is a little over 10 minutes but the full forest dwelling is a little over 30 minutes and it really mm -hmm. is something you like think into over time and um i think you know sometimes this there's this urge to like fill the space you know make it razzle dazzle and both of you have such a skill of like resisting the need to be um doing in this kind of dramatic way and there's like a way of being and really um kind of accepting that kind of tenderness the stillness the reverie um that i love about both of your works um and so i was actually I wanted to ask you, Shin Kwong, you started with the music, which is a little backwards for some filmmaking, and that's our favorite way. <laughs> um, and um, can you talk about kind of how you drew inspiration from the music and also how you got your idea of like uh, featuring your apartment in your film? Because your apartment is like the place where this, this piece happens. Yeah, I think. It's kind of funny, you guys, uh, Jennifer, you were talking about when you first listened. I think when I first listened to this piece, I was like, I think I got you you and the Cassia's email on like driving to like, I forgot which, like we, I like to go like hiking every weekend. So I think I was on a long drive to like the mountain and I, I got this email said, okay, sure, I will listen to this new music you guys sent me. And I feel when I was driving like in a car, you know, and then you see the landscape passing. And I think I just let it play on the loop. And I mm. feel that journey really inspired what the film is. I feel it's like the place is passing, but I think the transport quality of this music is interesting. I feel sometimes you think about like everyone talk about music can transport you to a place or somewhere. But sometimes that experience, at least for me, in before it's all very, you know, dramatic or the theatrical, like oh, transport to like I don't know psychedelic thing or something ridiculous. But I feel this forest telling like give me like almost I feel I transport back to a home, like something very calm and a very peace. Just very I feel for me it's a very new experience listening to music, and I think that make me feel oh this piece is about home, but I'm also on the journey to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like in the description, it also happened to me. I'm in the mood when I filmed this, I'm in the process of moving. So yeah, and I mm -hmm. think that apartment really, and I just want to feature that place. And uh, yeah, it's really give me a lot of energy, and, uh, especially during the COVID time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Something I'm realizing as you're both kind of telling the stories is, Neil, you made this piece. It was kind of still during the ebbs and flows of the the like hotter, we'll say, pandemic. You know, right. it's all kind of 
fuzzy, but, um, and then also Xinguang, you're talking, this was the apartment that you lived out your pandemic yeah. experience in. And I hadn't really pieced that together <laughs> until just now that there's like threads <laughs> of that like very recent. And when we, I think so many of us had to like reckon with home and our sense of space and community. And um, um, so that's really an interesting thread <laughs> to kind of realize. And I don't think we really um, describe kind of what the film, uh, maybe it's helpful to kind of describe. So the music, um, and if I get anything wrong, y'all just interject and correct me. Um, but the music has these kind of really lush, um, uh, I would say like synth kind of mm, drones or like uh, washes underneath and it's very like, patient and sparkling harp interjections on this kind of world that slowly slowly shifts and there's some field recordings in it too um and the film um is this series of very very beautifully uh beautiful domestic tableaus of like of, of, of what's clearly like a home like a bicycle in the hallway the refrigerator with magnets on it um, and throughout all of these tableaus, there's a mirror that kind of acts as a portal to these like outdoor imageries of mm -hmm. trees or birds. Um, and that is kind of where you sit for the, the duration of the piece, just the sense of the indoor, outdoor and, and home and domesticity. Um, so for people who haven't seen it yet, you absolutely should, but now you kind of know what we're, what we're getting at. Um, and I was wondering, um, you know, something I really admire about the film work is how it's it, it's um, it moves in this very tender way, but also with what I was mentioning before, this kind of bold patience. Like, you know, you're not like taking us through the apartment on a tour. <laughs> it's just these very patient and beautiful um, moments that feel very personal, and also like I I feel a sense of my own home through that viewing of your space. Um, and I wanted to ask, like, um, could you kind of talk about what your how how you put it together and how you decided to juxtapose creating like this kind of mirror portal mm -hmm. with your apartment and um, how you see that? What do you what do you see that saying? <laughs> yeah, just I think from the very beginning, I know I want to do something like the window, mm -hmm. but I didn't really realize yeah and then I was playing with I actually playing with different shape of things <laughs> like it was like first I think just a very small piece of paper like a square and I just start to you know place it around my home and I see how it looks like and I didn't even think about to put like and I was just thinking oh all well, the window can be different shape but I found this like you know circular mirror lying around my home and I just feel this needs to be something simple and the kind of response to them I really love for telling how simple it is but it has a lot of layers so I think I really just decide to let the image tell a story and the, the circular mirror is really just like a portal and uh, I really like to observe like the light in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was interesting. Like sometimes I will feel like, okay, something in my kitchen, like at 10 a.m. And then suddenly at 2 p.m. I was like, oh no, this lighting is way better <laughs> than before. So I will feel exactly <laughs> the same composition again. So I think it's really for me also the way to kind of get to know my apartment more, which I really enjoy the journey of yeah, doing that. And uh, yeah, just look at things different way. Yeah. And I think the light is very important in the piece and how the light change in the space. So I think making it slow, I really also hope that, you know, that I, idea change like uh, convey to the audience. Yeah, I think and now that you're saying it, I can picture how the light is kind of playing throughout the film. And I think I had, I think I hadn't realized it in a conscious way. And 
It makes me want to rewatch it and also makes me think of how I enjoy my, you know, we all have those spots in our homes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're like, oh, yeah, this time. time. <laughs> yeah. 4 p.m. spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's just so like universal and personal at the same time. And I love that kind of um, that like warmth of merging like the personal and and how I can feel it in my in my own experience, too. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to also invite both of you kind of if there's anything I, I miss talking about that you really want to talk about the pieces or any projects you have right now that you're really excited about that you wanted to share. Um, I want to invite you to kind of share about them or talk about them. I wonder, Naila, do you have anything you wanted to uh, to to talk about that you're up to or add? Yeah, I, I mean, I since I've been back in the U.S., I've been just kind of in a meditation zone with with all of the instruments that I play, especially piano and harp, mm. and it feels like. Um, a straight up meditation project is emerging <laughs> and that feels Amazing. that feels right you know <laughs> at this point so yeah that that's pretty much so it. exciting really cool <laughs> Shen Kong, do you have anything that you're working on that you want to share about yeah yeah i'm hoping like developing this piece it's like a video installation called loss and the found and uh, yeah it's also a uh, project about I would say about home but it's about childhood home mm -hmm. so it's like um so what happened is like my family accidentally like not as like unexpectedly uh got our childhood home back so I got to visit it like after like 20 something years and I was hoping to have this emotional you know memory in it but actually I have none wow. of it when I tour the home. And I just, so I think the piece is really to find out what's happening there and uh, where are those memory goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. No, yes. I mean, both of you, please keep us posted because we would love to see what's coming up and love your work. I also want to kind of highlight that the, the film is paired with a piece of visual art by Adrian mm -hmm. Tenney. Um, it's called Wind and Sound Number Six, and uh, Adrian has this really cool practice of uh, gardening with California native plants and a sound practice and visual art. And this piece was made by like sitting in a California native garden at her home while listening to the sounds of distant highway traffic. So again, that kind of tension between the city and nature. Um, so thank you both so much for your beautiful work and for sharing it with us. And um, we're just really grateful and honored to get to see and to see what you're up to and share it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have great days and we'll see you around. Everyone get see the film and enjoy it. Bye. Bye.